Mixed martial arts, MMA, is a sport that displays our innate primal instinct when we're fighting. In the Ultimate Fighting Championship, UFC, there is little that's held back in and outside the fighting arena. We're here to show you MMA athletes who went too far during a fight. From punching an unconscious person to pushing your body too far and breaking it without knowing. Stick around until the end for the fastest KO in UFC history. We warn you, what we're about to tell you isn't for the faint of heart. Rousamar Pollers no tapping way. During a primal fight, it's easy to forget where you are when everything becomes about beating your opponent. But the UFC and MMA sportsmanship promotes self-control to be one of the most vital aspects. The moment control is lost is the moment things go wrong. Tapping out is done either by the fighter, fueled on adrenaline, it doesn't happen too much, or the referee, the ref deems fit. But it that the pinned fighter is unconscious or locked in too much. The referee will tap on to the MMA fighter who is doing the restraining as an all right mate you've won get off him. Reasonable to ignore the first few taps when your body is pumped off adrenaline but to be well known as a dirty fighter and continue to hold out when you're fully aware of everyone is getting mad at you and literally pulling you off your competitor, Rousamar Pollers is just that kind of dirty fighter. Pollers will choke a player out or leave them in extreme pain far past the whistle. The fighters that tap out are normally screaming in pain for a full five seconds tapping fervently to be released, but Pollers holds them on for a little more. Pollers has seen his karmic retribution in the form of a few knockouts since the MMA fighters know he's going to try something like this. If they escape, there's a fueled passion and he has been KO'd alongside being kicked out of the UFC for two years. Paul Daly tasting the punch. Paul Daly trained in all forms of fighting via throwing punches and kicking and all the acrobatics that come with it. Unfortunately, kind of like a rock, paper, scissors situation, getting in close and wrestling your opponent stops their ability to punch and kick, leaving you to get angrier and angrier as you try to swing your body in vain. Paul Daly went up against Josh Kocek in the final Ultimate Fighting Championship match, the title match, the most important match of the entire UFC collective. Josh Kocek is a great wrestler, and the entire title match saw Kocek absolutely dominate. Paul Daly was getting more and more frustrated with this and started to go for the eyes and gouge them, one of the few things the UFC doesn't look too kindly upon. But what really marked him is what happened after the bell rang. Kulschek was walking away. Paul Daly went over to him and what normally happens is an exchange of respect and some camaraderie. Not here though. Daly tapped Kulschek on the back and when he looked over, walloped him straight in the face and nose. The referee instantly got Daly in a chokehold. Ironic that the ref wrestled Daly. It really does seem to be one of his weaknesses. And the crowds booed his actions. This led to Dana White, president of the UFC, to expel Daly from the competition. The eye gouging could be contended as not having happened, but everyone saw the undisputed sucker punch. Down before, he hit the floor and hit some more. The octagon is no stranger to blood. In the match between Dan Henderson and Michael Bisping, saw the brutality really come to life. Both are known as bruisers, aka hard hitters, one mistake and you're on the floor. The match saw both fighters maneuver around each other with equal skill with right hands aiming for the face and kicks weakening the legs. Both were defended and few were let in. But it wasn't until round two that things really got heated. Henderson goes for a kick, elbow and a punch all at the same time. And there are just some places in the human body where once it suffers damage, the body shuts down. The chin can be one of those as sending it spinning sends the body into such a shock that out go the lights. This is normally followed by some very obvious signs. A limp body that begins to twitch, a collapsed opponent that just crumbles to the ground and an outstretched body that does nothing to defend itself. Nor should it defend itself. No morally right person would punch an unconscious body. Henderson didn't register these signs well enough because he went in and began punching the unconscious Bisping who couldn't retaliate. It's a contentious topic because jumping on your opponent the moment they go down is common to get the upper hand, but an unconscious one should be left alone. The crowd saw Bisping get KO'd the moment it happened, but Henderson was either too heated or chose to ignore it. What's your opinion? The UFC fights are regulated to ensure no one is critically injured, and there have been no deaths as of yet in the UFC, and the fighters know what they're getting themselves into. Regardless, does that warrant this kind of violence and bloodshed? The long-term damage it may cause? Football is becoming an increasingly dangerous sport with the ad 
advent of concussions causing brain damage, but the UFC fighters consent to this and want this release. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Crap talk to a crap walk. Conor McGregor is well known for being a piece of work that will run his mouth for attention and do anything and everything to get on the big screen or in his opponent's head. Dustin Poirier was his opponent and according to McGregor, Poirier's wife was in his direct messages, DMs, for a long time and even before the fight. These two have fought before and both have one-to-one -one on each other, but McGregor has been faltering recently. He's made it to the top and if he loses this fight, it's back to the bottom of the pole for him. Nothing can can stop his mind from giving up. The bell rings and McGregor starts the match with a huge kick followed by a flurry of kicks. Poirier later said, it's at this moment that I felt some snap. The first round was barely over and McGregor steps back after throwing a punch with such determination, but it's not his foot that hits his leg. Not to say his foot didn't touch, but it curved out of the way. A vertical drop forces his foot to turn sideways and his leg to continue pushing on breaking the connection. McGregor screams in pain, steps back up and instantly falls. Poirier goes in for a few more punches before the match is over. McGregor keeps on hurling verbal abuse and Poirier goes to his wife and they embrace. His wife flips McGregor off before leaving the ring, a just end for McGregor. Vail Tudo Eye The Vail Tudo has its origins in Brazil. Vail Tudo roughly means anything goes, which obviously led to some more serious severe injuries. It became underground due to this, and the more regulated UFC came into being in the 19th century. But Vail Tudo was making an appearance again in Japan in 1995 with Yuki Nakai. This man was on track to take down three opponents, one after the other, in a tournament match. In the first round against a 6'5", 240-pound hulk of a man, Gordo, Yuki being 5'6 and 135, Yuki grappled his opponent's arm in an excellent display of technique, but this is where things got Game of Thrones style. Gordo apparently purposely reached out and dug into Nikai's eye socket and gouged it, leaving it terribly swollen and losing sight. This is enough to make anyone leave the ring and go seek immediate medical attention, but Nikai is made of much stronger stuff than I. He readies himself for the next round. It's another hulking man who has 100 pounds on him with only one eye working, and in some ungodly amount of pain, Nikai takes down his opponent in a submission win. He just won against massively unfavorable odds, even when all his facilities were intact. Nakai again pushes on and faces the final match. Rickson Gracie was an undefeated 8-0 champion. Gracie is a born champion and Nakai knew this. This is what the definition of courage is. Fully blind in one eye now and facing an undefeated champion. Nakai steps into the ring. The fight was fierce and chaotic. Neither contestant could have predicted how this would have ended up. Nakai bounces around, waving to the the crowd with a huge lump where his eye was. Still standing, still ready, Gracie has a look of pity in his eyes as they touch gloves, which is shortly taken away as Nakai goes for a surprise pin and Gracie's body tenses up. He counters and takes Nakai down with him and just holds him there. In what should have been an intense collision of two huge forces becomes a respectful pin. Nakai lies there, both eyes closed. Normally, fighters would punch each other to weaken them, but Gracie just stares at Nakai as something in him grows. Nakai continues to fight for five minutes straight against this hulking man. There's even a point where Gracie schoolboy pins Nakai and is about to punch him in the face but stops and goes for a chokehold. Gracie wins, but it's not the win we know today. There is no dance, no victory music playing. Nakai stays on the floor whilst people crowd him, and Gracie reluctantly accepts the title. Nakai kept his blindness this is secret from the world. This was a tumultuous time for MMA, and Yuki Nakai literally gave up his eye in support of the sport. The fastest KO ever. Ben Askren versus Jorge Masvidal begins. Masvidal runs and begins with a flying knee kick. Askren ducks for a grab. The collective force of the dip combined with the flying force of the knee is an instant knockout five seconds into the match. That brings us to the end of the video. MMA has some dirty fighters, but overall, there is a lot of support for the sport, and there are people there to ensure the dirtier fighters get their karmic reputation. What do you think of our list? Got some more that we missed? Let us know in the comments.